I gather you went to hear the Liberal candidate today. There were several speakers, actually. He was the last. Did he speak well? I thought so. But there was quite a brouhaha. You know what these things can be like. I do. Which is why I am astonished you should not feel it necessary to ask my permission to attend. I assume this was Branson's scheme. No. I confess I... I was amused at the idea of an Irish radical for a chauffeur, but I see now I've been naive. I told Branson to take Sybil. What are you saying? Sybil needed to go to Ripon. I asked Branson to drive her. I thought it would be sensible. In case there was trouble. I want to do some canvassing. The by-election isn't far off. Canvassing? I was quite safe. You're in a group and you knock on doors. Yes, I know what canvassing is. I think that Sybil is... What? Are you canvassing too? Or would you rather take in washing? I was only going to say that Sybil is entitled to her opinions. No. She isn't until she is married. Then her husband will tell her what her opinions are. Oh, cranny. I knew you were to prove. Which presumably is why you all hid your plans from me. Does this mean you won't be presented next month? Certainly not. Why should it? Well, I doubt I'd expect to curtsy to their majesties in June when I'd been arrested as a riot in May. But then I'm old. Things may be different now. She hasn't been arrested and it wasn't a riot. But it might be next time. There will not be a next time. in politics are spoiling for a fight. My problem is you. Oh, I... <laughs> oh, no. Oh, please, God, no. This way. How dare you? How dare you disobey me in this way? Robert, I'm sure... Are you so knowledgeable about the great world? Papa, I'm sorry I disobeyed you. But I'm interested. I'm political. I have opinions. Of course, I blame Branson. I don't think that's fair. We had none of this. None of it! Until he set foot in our house. I suppose I should give thanks he hasn't burnt the place down over our heads. Branson didn't know anything about it until we arrived there. He leaves tonight. If you punish Branson, I'll never speak to you again. Never. I don't believe this is Branson's fault, truly, Papa. Blame me. I do blame you! Robert, can we do this in the morning? Sybil needs rest. But if I find tomorrow that Branson is missing, I'll run away, I warn you. Oh! And where would you go? Well, I can't think now, but I will go. You'll be sorry. <laughs> I should be sorry. Very sorry indeed. Branson. When you've finished unloading, run down to the hospital and remind Lady Sybil that we expect her here for dinner. And tell her I mean it. Really. They're working her like a pack horse in a mine. I think she enjoys it, though. Please tell her to come home in time to change. I can't possibly come. Really, Mama is incorrigible. 
Well, it's not Paul Branson's fault. But what is the point of Mama's soirees? What are they for? Well, I'm going up for dinner tonight and I'm glad. Is that wrong? <coughs> Thomas, you can cover for Nurse Crawley, can't you? I can. Yes! I thought you may want to know what I think. Oh, why should I? Nurse Crawley, I may not be your social superior in a Mayfair ballroom, but in this hospital, I had the deciding voice. Please help him prepare his belongings. He leaves first thing in the morning. Doesn't it feel odd to have the rooms back? And only us to sit in them. I suppose we'll get used to it. I don't want to get used to it. What do you mean? I know what it is to work now. To have a full day, to be tired in a good way. I don't want to start dress fittings or paying calls or standing behind the guns. But how does one escape all that? I think I found a way to escape. Nothing too drastic, I hope. It is drastic. There's no going back once I've done it, but that's what I want. No going back. I don't want to go back either. Then don't. You're far nicer than you were before the war, you know. She's eloped. She's on her way to Gretna Green. They must stop at some point. It won't be open before the morning. They won't expect us to be in pursuit until tomorrow, so they'll stay somewhere on the road. We help. Everyone keep an eye out for the motor. Did you know? Never mind that. At least nothing's happened, thank God. What do you mean nothing's happened? I've decided to marry Tom and you're coming after me won't change that. This isn't the way. She's right. Of course Mama and Papa will hate it. And why should they? Oh, pipe down. Sybil, can't you let them get used to the idea? Take your stand and refuse to budge, but allow them time. That way you won't have to break up the family. They would never give permission. You don't need permission. You're 21. But you do need their forgiveness if you're not to start your new life under a black shadow. Don't listen. She's pretending to be reasonable to get you home again. Even if I am, even if I think this is mad, I know it would be better to do it in broad daylight than to sneak off like a thief in the night. Go back with them, then. If you think they can make you happier than I will. Am I so weak you believe I can be talked out of giving my heart in five minutes flat? But Mary's right. I don't like to see it and our parents don't deserve it. But why announce it tonight all of a sudden? He's got a job at a newspaper. He heard today it's a real chance. Let him go to Dublin and then you can use the calm to consider. <sighs> Mary doesn't want you to be trapped before you're completely sure. But I am sure. How many times do I have to say it? Anna, tell them. Lady Mary's right. It's a very big thing to give up your whole world. Thank you. Listen to her if you won't listen to me. But I'm not giving up my world. They want to give me up. That's their affair. I'm perfectly happy to carry on being friends with everyone. Married to the chauffeur? Yes. Anyway, he's a journalist now, which sounds best for Granny. We're going to tell Papa tonight. We? You mean you and Branson? He's coming in after dinner. But what will Papa do? I imagine he'll call the police. 
What do you mean, you knew? I hoped it would blow over. I didn't want to split the family when Sybil might still wake up. And all the time you've been driving me about, bowing and scraping and seducing my daughter behind my back. I don't bow and scrape, and I've not seduced anyone. Give your daughter some credit for knowing her own mind. How dare you speak to me in that tone? You will leave at once. Oh, Papa! Oh, this is a folly. A ridiculous juvenile mass. Sybil, what do you have in mind? Uh, Mama, this is hardly... No. She must have something in mind. Otherwise, she wouldn't have summoned him here tonight. Thank you, Granny. Yes, we do have a plan. Tom's got a job on a paper. Oh. I'll stay until after the wedding. I don't want to steal their thunder. But after that, I'll go to Dublin. To live with him? Unmarried? I'll live with his mother while the bands are red. And then we'll be married. And I'll get a job as a nurse. And what does your mother make of this? If you must know, she thinks we're very foolish. <laughs> so at least we have something in common. I won't allow it. I will not allow my daughter to throw away her life. You can posture it all you like, Papa. It won't make any difference. Well, yes, it will. How? I don't want any money. You can hardly lock me up until I die. I'll say goodnight. But I can promise you one thing. Tomorrow morning, nothing will have changed. Tom. <laughs>